Hi there. Good morning, wherever you are. Uh, thanks for tuning into the YouTube channel. Um, my name's Woody, and um, it's another little chat with you about my continuing, um, ongoing battle with uh, prostate cancer. In case you don't know me, I was diagnosed three years ago at the age of 55 with um, stage four prostate cancer. Um, which had spread to many parts of my body. Um, since then I was on uh, hormone treatment, um, which has really, really worked um, and got rid of most of the cancer. Um, and then recently it started to return. So here I am now, live, um, waiting uh, for my last um, transfer into hospital where I'm gonna have my last um, radiotherapy session so uh, I've had this will be number six this intense radiotherapy um, into three places of my body um, which is fine and uh, I can't wait for it to be over to be honest it's uh, it's been a bit of a struggle because uh, I've got some issues with my my back which means uh, from from the damage done by the cancer previously um, I find it really difficult to lay flat without being in, in a lot of pain so um, last week was the worst one, so I'm hoping today it can't be any worse than that. Um, last week I was there for, I think it was 40 minutes before um, before they, they said we're going to have to give you a break, um, let me go for 15 minutes and then um, came back and had another go because just couldn't get me in the right position. Um, and uh, I don't know what why that is, I think it's possibly because when I had my staging scan um, I wasn't sitting in the right position. That's it, they keep telling me that I'm in an unnatural position. I have to maintain that position, you see. Um, because when they're doing radiotherapy, you can't afford to move around. You can't, you can't really, um, you can't move out of position. And I don't want to scare anyone, because I think if you didn't have the back problem like me, it'll be a, it'll be a piece of cake, as everyone else seems to, to find it. So, yeah, I'm gonna go off today. Um, fingers crossed it goes really smoothly. Um, I was wondering what to, th what to talk about today and someone put a little uh, comment on here about when they do their radiotherapy they, um, they imagine themselves fishing and I thought that was something that, was, um, that I could expand more on that's, more, that's really helpful um, because in my case last week um, when I came out of the room after 40 minutes and I hadn't worked, and I hadn't started it, I started to think, what can I do to, to change my mindset here? Because I was starting to get quite frustrated. Not to say a little bit angry, I think I'm getting a bit angry with myself, but when you're in pain and things are not going right, you do you, you can turn to, to anger and, and all those sort of emotions, you know? So anyway, I, I decided to just try and change everything and come back in with, as if I was a different person, um, you know? and it, while I was on the table, I, I thought I, I, I was quite relaxed actually because I started to um, to do a bit of a visualization myself, and I visualized my my family, and it was almost like I was seeing this photo album of my children as they were going up through the ages, and my wife, and and, and all these little mini things that have happened over the years, um, and it really was surprising how it helped. It just made me much more calmer, and it made me. Well, it made it go really quickly, to be honest. Um, and I've been doing this sort of thing, this this visualization technique before. Um, but I'm going to talk about a way that you can you can use a really interesting way of um, of harnessing the power of the mind, because the mind is the thing that does this. And you, if you've watched my past videos, you'll know that a lot of the stuff I talk about is about how you think about things. You know, if you change the way you think about things, the things you, you think about change, it's a kind of uh, a lovely little saying. Um, but what I used to do is, uh, in times of, you know, I, I have had some quite emotional problems over the years, and especially since this started, um, was to imagine myself in my favourite place. I'd go to a beach, or I used to be a ski instructor years ago, so I'd go up to a mountain, in my mind, just close my eyes. But the trick is, is to go through every sense one at a time imagine what you're seeing imagining what you're you're hearing imagine what you're feeling 
smelling, all those kind of things. Even taste, you can even imagine the taste of the air, you know. And you want to do that for about three or four minutes so you get it really intense. And when it's really intense and it's like you feel that you're there, there's this wonderful thing that the brain does. The brain, um, when you're in a, an imaginative state like that, the brain actually believes you're there. So it creates the same feelings that you would have had back in that time when you really were there. So you, it's, it, it's like you're there. Um, it's like when you you listen to a song that comes on the radio and it suddenly transports you back into time, into a place instantly, just because you might have a really strong memory about that about that song and something emotionally connected to the song. So when I get that point when it's really, really powerful and I feel like I'm there, I then just, I use a trigger and I just pinch my thumb and forefinger like this or you can, you can do your ear, anything you like, and you hold it, and you hold it for about a minute, and you go through that imagination, and then you just let it go. And then you do it again, you start the build up again, you go through all your senses, and when you got it at the most, um, where it feels so real that you're there, you pinch it again. And you keep doing this over and over again through, you know, do it a few times each day, and what happens eventually is just by doing this, transports you straight into it so it's kind of like an anchor point that you make and then you this this triggers it and I think that's a really great way when you're dealing with cancer and you've got all the stresses that go with cancer like the, the waiting for scans and the, the results and, and and all that stuff that goes with it and if you're in in pain sometimes just by taking your yourself away from your own mind and going somewhere else is, is, is so useful and so helpful. Um, and through my experience over the last three years, it really does work. So often I find I can be literally doing nothing and all of a sudden I, I, I might suddenly get a feeling come over me about how bad things are. Um, you get that feeling of dread. And that's basically cancer just often just you know grabs your hand and drags you down this sort of horrible place in your mind that you don't want to be. Um, but I've realised over the, the last three years that, that, that I have a choice to go, no, I don't want to go down that pathway, I don't want to walk with you through this doorway, I choose this doorway, and I want to go through another doorway which is is somewhere where I want to be. And this kind of visualisation works um, really fantastic. And I was actually doing a bit of research about this and i come across this thing about um, a ski team. Uh, it's quite a long time ago. They used to, in the, in the, in the sort of close season, they used to practice um, sometimes on uh, simulators. And what they would do is they would uh, wire the, the skiers up with probes and things just to check what muscles they were using and how they were using them. Now, one of the guys was being wired up um, and he wasn't on the machine yet, but the actual screen started showing a reaction as if his muscles were starting to flex as if he was skiing. Um, and the the guy said to him, what are, you, what are you thinking about? He said, I'm just thinking about the run I'm going to do, or the run I did yesterday. And, he said, and they, they sort of realised that by just thinking about it, there was activating certain muscles. So there's this massive... Um, mind-body connection that I don't think people talk about it enough. I don't think doctors and, you know, we need stuff sometimes that's out of the box. We don't just go along with everything. I think sometimes you've got to go into your uh, your imagination a lot more um, to get yourself out of dark places, you know. Um, and I, I find it works. So, you know, hopefully, guys, look, it don't cost anything. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't change anything in your. It doesn't make you worse. That's for sure. But you know, why don't you have a go? If you're not feeling great, why don't you just sit down somewhere, maybe in a garden, um, and just go for a go for a memory in your mind where you want to go and visit, and just see what happens to it. And don't forget, use every sense you got, because all those senses, they build up the power of it. Um, and that's what I'm going to try and do this afternoon. Again, if I feel I'm, I'm, I'm going to struggle with it, I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm not dreading it either. I think, I think, 
one thing is it's the last one, so what what can be the worst case? You know, that's the way I kind of look at it. Um. So yeah, that's my little chat today. I hope it will, it helps someone. If it helps one person, it's worth me talking about it, isn't it? If um. If you do it, and it and it and it works for you, please let me know. Just give me a little comment and say, yeah, I've done this before. Um, and let us know how it gets on, because it might be something we can spread around and let other people know about it. Because I've never seen a doctor ask anyone to do that. You know? Um, but anyway, I'm off in a minute, so whatever you're doing, stay positive and um, keep fighting, okay? And I'll speak to you again, most probably next week sometime, once I've um, done all this, and hopefully then we start seeing some some improvements maybe. Okay, cheers, bye bye.